Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be trying out a bunch of new stuff that I opened up in my previous vlog as well as on my Insta stories. So if you aren't following me on Instagram, give me a follow there. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, just getting all the good stuff the good and the necessary stuff out of the way. I always forget to say it in the intro to my videos. I've lined up everything new back here that I've been wanting to try. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in the same categories. There's a lot of exciting stuff. So if you're interested and wanna see or get a first impressions, first look at some new products, keep on watching. I don't have any new face products, no new primers, foundations, concealers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my face base, base, first and then jump into everything else. I'm going to first start by priming my eyelids. I like using a really lightweight primer like this one, Shadow Insurance by Too Faced on the lid, underneath foundation um, to prevent it from creasing when I'm just gonna be using my foundation as a base. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rub that all over my lids. And for foundation, I'm gonna be using my current favorite, the Fenty foundation, the Fenty Pro Filter foundation. So I'm gonna be mixing this with my Smashbox Photo finish primerizer to share it out, give it more of a tinted moisturizer type of finish. And since that gave me more of a sheer finish, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Concealer just to cover up any other little imperfections like blemishes and sunspots. And then of course, to conceal and highlight down the center of the face, I'm using good old Tarte's Shape Tape in light medium. You know, I'm kind of surprised that there's no new face items. It's all lips, shadow palettes, and lips and shadow palettes. <laughs> to set my areas that crease up a lot, I'm gonna be using the trusted Laura Mercier Translucent Powder, but I just remembered I do have one new face product. It's the La Mer Sheer Pressed Powder. I do love their loose setting powder. I love it a lot. It is pricey, like all La Mer products, but they are great. <laughs> um, and this is a pressed powder with a little bit of color to it, so I'm gonna use this across the entire face once I've set with the Laura Mercier powder. And this is the powder in shade light. Oh, you know what? Let me grab shade medium. This is not gonna work, this is too light. Un momento, por favor. I grabbed shade number 32, medium instead. It looks a little better. I can't tell if it has a fragrance or not. It smells like it does, like a really light fragrance to it, but I can't really tell. I'm gonna use the La Mer powder brush with it since I already have this guy and then just do this little press and roll motion. Okay, I think it definitely has a fragrance to it. A very subtle one. It's not changing the color of my foundation, which I like. I was nervous I was gonna make me look too pink and dusty. Pressed powders or setting powders that have a slight tint to them make me nervous because it sucks when you get the perfect foundation match and then the powder changes the color of your foundation. But this one looks pretty good. It's going on pretty sheer and nice. It doesn't look like I have a lot of product on the skin. I like it. And for bronzer, the only new one I have is this one from the NARS Holiday Collection, which is absolutely stunning. Opening up this PR box that's back here, right here, this gold box. It brought back so many work memories. Every time holiday hit, it was just, you would cry, it was so beautiful. NARS does holiday really, really well. So this little palette is a part of the holiday collection. It is the NARS X Man Ray the Veil Cheek Palette. And in here we have a Laguna Bronzer. When I worked at NARS, I used to slather my face in Laguna Bronzer. I'm surprised no one at the boutique told me to calm it down because there was a moment where I was wearing so much bronzer, but we had to wear these black turtlenecks to work that were long sleeve and turtleneck. So you couldn't tell that my face did not match my body, but I just, I didn't care. And the other new bronzer slash illuminator that I have is this one from Becca. It's the Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed Gradient Glow. And it's got a bunch of different colors in here. I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of swirl them all together and apply them over uh, the bronzer. But this NARS bronzer looks like it has a sheen, like it's not completely matte, so it might be too glowy. I don't know if I'm gonna use the blush and the highlighter also, just because I have some other um, blushes and highlighters to choose from, but I definitely wanna go in with this Laguna bronzer. The formula of this Laguna bronzer is different from the OG one that comes in the compact, or at least I'm pretty sure it is, unless they just pressed it differently. But it looks like a different formula. It kind of reminds me of the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion that I like a lot. It feels really light and airy, and it has a really nice, slight, like satin, like soft satin, shimmery, not shimmery, 
There's no glitter to it. It's just like a nice satin uh, sheen type of finish to this bronzer. It's really pretty. I just looked at myself in the monitor and it looks like I went a little ham with the bronzer like usual, um, but I'm gonna blend it out in just a moment. I think I am gonna go in with just a little bit of this Becca Gradient Glow bronzer slash illuminator. I'm just gonna dust it over this bronzer. I don't know, I might regret it after I do it, but let's see. Ooh, so I'm just like very lightly sweeping it over the temples. It looks really nice. I actually really like this. I thought it was gonna be, I don't know. Usually I don't go for bronzers, highlighters, or blushes that look like this where there's multiple colors in one, but this one, when you mix them together, is actually giving a really nice glow. And then like I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and buff this out so it doesn't look too intense. I'm grabbing my Japanese brush and just kind of buffing across the entire face. And because I don't know what I'm doing to the eyes yet, I'm gonna hold off on doing a blush and a highlight and start dipping into the eyeshadow palettes. I have so many to choose from. Don't look at the back of my hair. Don't judge it, I know. I didn't actually do my hair today. The palettes I have to choose from are the Natasha Denona Lila, Lila palette, this guy right here. I have the Pure Pro, oh, I'm gonna mess up his name, Atiene, Atien, Atien, Etienne <laughs> palette. This one's really beautiful as well. We have the Laura Lee Cat's Pajamas palette. Congrats, Laura, this is incredible. We have the Anastasia Prism palette. Stunning, that shade of green right there, Throne. <gasps> so beautiful. And then we have the Tartlet Toasted palette, which has a bunch of your um, basic warm eyeshadow colors in here. Definitely a good mixture of mattes and shimmers, transition shades. I think from all of these, the ones I'm gonna use are the Laura Lee Los Angeles palette because I'm dying to use this, as well as the Natasha Denona. I just filled in my brows off camera with the Dior Brow Styler since I have no new brow products to try. And before going in with eyeshadow, I'm going to dust a little bit of this La Mer powder from the brow bone down to the crease to make blending a lot easier, especially a little more right here on the outside. I'm gonna start by going in with Bum Diggity. Also, notice all the names, so cute. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fluff this into the crease and really wing it out towards the hairline. I'm also gonna be applying this shadow to the lower lash line, so I'm just gonna switch over to a smaller brush and do that while I'm on this eyeshadow. Yeah, these are going on really easily. They're also blending out really nicely. As you can see, they're not going on chalky or patchy. And to further deepen up this look, I'm gonna go in with Cray Cray. Same thing, applying it to the crease and the lower lash line. One thing I do notice from her eyeshadows, the ones that she selected for the palette, is that they all complement each other. So this top row is a look, this bottom row is a look. And I love that she included a black eyeshadow. I feel like every palette, every eyeshadow palette should have a black eyeshadow. They're just kind of like a, I don't know how to explain it. They're kind of like an essential to me when it comes to palettes. So I love that she included the black in there. And I'm mainly focusing this on the outer corner. Again, look at how easily that blends. It's so pigmented and the brush picks up a lot, but it's blending out so nicely, so incredibly good. Like what? It didn't snag or catch on any areas of the eyes. It doesn't look chalky. It's just diffusing out so nicely. I'm really impressed. I'm really loving this palette, so I think I'm gonna stick with it and just create an entire look off of it. So the next chateau I'm going in with is Kuki. And I'm just gonna, again, build on the color, apply to the outer um, V of the eye. Shooketh, very shooketh. And then with my fingertip, I'm gonna apply Corky. So just right here. Actually, I'm gonna blend that all the way into the inner corner part of the eye. And the last shadow I'm gonna use is the black eyeshadow. You can tell it has a little bit of sparkle to it. I just wanna further define the eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this really close to the lash line, both upper and lower lash line, focusing it more towards the outer portion of the eye. Blending that black eyeshadow into the rest of the colors with that smaller brush. And actually the last thing I'm gonna use from this palette is Scatterbrain as an inner corner highlight, just because I can't help myself. This is an eyeshadow look that I would typically do. I think she nailed the colors, the color scheme, the formula. It is an absolutely beautiful palette. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the eyes with, I think the only um, new item, well, both of these are new, but I've used this liner before. This is the Melt Cosmetics All Day Every Day Eyeliner in 1987. I'm gonna fill in my waterline, both upper and lower. 
And then this mascara has been out for a while. I tried it once and then just kind of forgot about it. I can't remember if I liked it or not. I'm assuming it was okay since I forgot about it, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it again today. This is the Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara. Okay, I think I remember why I didn't use this again. It gives your lashes that very stiff feeling. It feels very like crunchy, I guess. I can tell it's gonna leave my lashes feeling very stiff. Wow, I hadn't seen the makeup far away yet on the monitor and this eyeshadow looks amazing. And I kind of wish I would have used this knowing I was gonna do a purple eyeshadow look. This is the new Becca Cosmetics Shimmering Skin Perfector Lilac Geode. Lilac Geode? It would have gone... Let me see if I can toss it into the inner corners without, or let's see if it even shows up, I don't know. Maybe like right here. It's definitely adding a tiny hint of color. It's changing the gold to more of a lilac finish, but ugh, I kind of wish I would have just done this for an inner corner. Um, okay, so now to finish the face, highlighter and blush. I'm definitely gonna be using Heart's new illuminator with e.l.f. The um, pigmentation on this and the finish is beautiful, but as far as face products, I have a lot in the NARS collection, but I might use that in a separate video. Um, but I do have these two new blush kits by Anastasia. The colors in the darker one are pretty interesting. Um, there was only one that really caught my eye. I don't think I could really use any of these. They're too dark. But this one down here caught my eye. It is such a beautiful, rich, rich plum. But even for a darker skin tone, I don't see how that could be a blush. It looks really gray. More of a contouring powder, maybe? And then the other one is Radiant. Gradient's the dark one, and Radiant is the lighter of the two. So this is Radiant. Should we try this one? Let's try one of these. I'm taking the tiniest pinch. This is the one I've decided to go to because it's more neutral. But what I like to do is pick it up, dust it off on my arm, and then apply it to my cheeks. Even the way it's going on my arms, it looks a little patchy, but I can't really tell on the skin. SOS. Yeah, no. It's going on a little, like it's bunching up or getting a little, it's not smooth. It looks really textured and chunky, almost like the pigment is just gathering in certain areas. Even when you swatch it, it looks, I don't know, it's really interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and use again that La Mer powder and the large powder brush to buff this out, buff over it to smooth it out and make it look more natural. I'm grabbing a stiffer brush to further blend this out. I'm gonna have to play with these some more, but from what I just saw, not too impressed. Okay, going in with the e.l.f. Heart Coffee and Cream Highlighter Duo. I don't know to use the lighter side or the more tan side. I feel like I'm kind of in between. But I'm gonna use the more tan side because this one's gonna be too frosty. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. That's the more golden side. Super pretty. I already have a lot of glow going on because of the Gradient Glow Highlighter by Becca, but for the sake of the video, let's just Let's just add some more glow. Wow, this is so beautiful. You did an amazing job. Um, a lot of e.l.f. products are hit or miss for me. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but this one is definitely a hit. Out of all the lipsticks I have back here, by far the most unique are these new two-toned lipsticks by Bite Beauty. They have two colors in one, so they're split down the middle like this. So this one has a darker and lighter shade. This one is Chai and Nori. So let's give it a try. Let's see how it goes. I'm just picking it up like so. I like it, I mean it's pretty and again, I like the concept. I just feel like I would wear them individually versus mixing them together. I just feel like this kind of, with this look, I feel like it's falling a little flat. I feel like I need something more vibrant or nude. I also have the new Nicki Minaj lipsticks. They're definitely too pink for me, too pink for my taste. I wouldn't wear any of those colors. Um, but they are pretty pinks, just not for me. Ooh, I have these new NARS lipsticks. Okay, let's just throw this one on because the look is already dramatic. This is the NARS Audacious Lipstick in the shade Kirat, K-I-R-A-T, Kirat. This is definitely Instagram photo worthy. I would wear this for an Instagram post, but I don't think I would wear this lipstick paired with this eyeshadow look because it's a little too intense and too matchy matchy. But again, I would love it for a photo just because it would look super traumatic and cool. I think I'm gonna try one more lip color from these new ones. I think I'm gonna try 
I don't like matte nudes, but this one looks darker than a nude. This is Anastasia's Starfish lipstick. So let's try this one out for the last option. And I'm gonna stick with this final lip option to conclude this video because I think it pairs really nicely with this look. It doesn't overpower the eyes. It's uh, neutral and taupey, um, still kind of like a nude, but it's not one of those gray lipsticks that could be unwearable. I think this is a wearable lip color. And yeah, I think from everything in today's video, what really caught my attention or what I think is definitely worth checking out are, first of all, Laura Lee's Cat's Pajamas palette. I'm not just saying this because she's also an influencer that I happen to know, but you guys saw it as I was using it. It went on the eyes so beautifully. It blended out so nicely. It's easy to work with. It has all your basics in here. Um, you could definitely use this palette every single day. And then the other one, um, again, another influencer collab, the e.l.f. Heart Defensor Coffee and Cream um, Highlighter Duo because the quality of this is incredible and I'm assuming it is affordable considering it is e.l.f. So definitely worth picking up since it is limited edition. It is just, I mean, when you can get this good of a highlighter at such a good price, then it is 100% worth it and heart did an amazing job. Um, the one item I would say I would pass on and I also feel like it's causing my cheeks to look a little choppy. Like there's like a patch missing right here from where I applied the Anastasia blush. These, I don't know what happened. I don't know why the pigment keeps chunking up like that and not going on smoothly. I'm gonna have to play with them again some more. But for a first impression, I would say I wasn't very impressed because you guys saw how the powder applied to my cheeks. It wasn't very smooth. It was very textured. And again, it's currently, I think, messing with my my cheek on this side. But um, yeah, I think that is everything. Let me know what caught your guys' attention if you think any of these items are worth checking out in the comment section down below. And as always, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.